Michael Jordan is not only the best basketball player, but he's the most exciting basketball player to ever play. Tatum fires away, pumps it in. The Big Three NBA podcast is powered by Prize Picks and the Game Time app. Hello, folks, and welcome to another edition of the Big Three NBA podcast. I'm Ashra Blakely, and I'm joined by the one and only, the award winning Keith Pompey of the Philadelphia Inquirer. What's going on, Keith? What's popping, man? How you been, bro? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. My football team is, is hanging in there. Your football team is hanging in there. Uh, we we're not gonna go too. We're not gonna talk too much about our football teams. Keith, just so y'all know, is a University of Pittsburgh alum, and I went to uh, the Syracuse University. Uh, we, we go. We'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. They they played earlier this year. Didn't go quite how I thought it would go, but that's another story, another day. We um, enjoy your first loss, right? Uh, some something, something like that, something yeah, like that. Yeah, but when, when you talk about things not going quite how you thought they would, uh, that brings us to our conversation today <laughs> with Keith, who covers the Philadelphia 76ers, who uh haven't quite had the season that many folks thought they would. And you know, there's a lot of I mean, there's there's so much on the on the plate to talk about with these with these cats, Keith. But you know, the, the biggest thing right off the bat is that you know, this this was a team that many thought was going to challenge. Uh, the Celtics uh, for supremacy in the East. And basically the Sixers have just been challenged, period. Uh, mm-hmm. The three and 12, uh, the only team with a worse record in the Eastern conference than them is the Washington wizards. Uh, and there's a lot of different factors and, and we're going to, we're going to delve into many of them uh, right off the bat, Keith, you know, Joel Embiid, you know, he is the the center of everything and anything that is Sixers basketball. And obviously when they played well, he's been a big part of that. And when they've not played well, he's been a central theme. So only having played a handful of games this year in, in Philly, um, what's what's your take on what's going on with Joel and, and, and his future with the team? And just why has this been? I mean, there's always been some type of you know drama, but it seems like the drama has been on a different level this year. Yeah, it really has. Uh, I, I think the reason why the drama is on a different level is because uh, – because of his knee, he's frustrated. Like in the past, you know, I mean, Joel, you know, we would all criticize Joel. We would say things and he was like, okay, wait, wait until the next game. And then everybody, so like, I'm going to make y'all have to praise me in the article. You could criticize me today, but I'm going to make y'all praise me in the article at the next game. I, I feel like right now there's a lot of frustration with him, right? And when you look at it, you, you know, it, He's been having this knee problem. Right now he has swelling in the knee. And it's it's one of those things when he gets on the court, he everybody knows he's not the same player. Like the last game he played at 15 and 11, 35 and 11. But even still, you didn't see that lateral movement. There was no lift on his jumper. You know what I mean? He 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 didn't get around as quickly as he did before. And I think that, you know, when you're a player and you're so used to playing at a high level and you don't things that used to bother you and that didn't bother you in the past, or you could shrug off in the past. Now, all of a sudden it's like, Oh, you wrote this about me. Oh, somebody leaked out something that somebody said in the locker room. So I, I just feel like there's like a lot of frustration, but the frustration is rooted in him, not at this particular time being a player that he used to be, or he's used to being. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you, you just touched on something that, you know, Joel has mentioned recently in that. And, and again, for those who, who aren't uh, up on it, uh, there was uh, multiple reports out uh, about just a, a team meeting in the locker room uh, that had some very specific <laughs> details in it. The kind that, you know, definitely somebody who was in that meeting was 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 absolutely spreading the gospel of what happened in that meeting. And Joel, you know, his response uh among his responses was that he wants to find the snitch uh, who, who basically ratted out that team meeting. And, and, and Keith, here's the thing that I, I kind of came down on with that. Uh, I understand wanting to find that information, but to be, to keep it a hundred, doesn't this brother got more problems than finding out who's snitching in the damn locker room? I mean, how is that playing out with, with the, with, within the locker room? The fact that, you know, yeah, you, you, you're real interested in finding out who said it, but what about, being interested in making sure your body right was for the start of the season. What about some of the things that I, I guess he had control over? I mean, it, it just feels, and again, this is from the outside looking in, but it seems like there is a growing divide between him and that locker room. 
Yeah, it, it kind of sort of is. Um, but 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 at the same time, I, I think that when you have so many new players, like publicly, they're not going to say anything, right? Mm-hmm. They're still trying to figure us out, right? So they're all like, you know, like uh, Paul George podcast P. Oh yeah, nothing went wrong. Like it was easy. Every I mean, every it was special. Like it wasn't a drama filled, like everyone says. But deep down inside, yeah, it, it's a distraction. Like it's one of those things where you look at Joel. And you want to say to him, like, bruh, I get it. I would be frustrated, too. But what you have to say in this particular time is, you know what? What we had stayed in-house. I'm a little disappointed that it got out there. But now it's time to move forward. At least say that to the media. You know what I mean? Like, you can you can have another team meeting and curse everybody out. I'm like, why y'all do me like this, right? Mm-hmm. But at least to the media, just say, you know what? I'm just going to move forward because now what it looks like is we talk about a team divide, but it makes him look worse because it's now the the thing is, well, well, day he didn't heed what they were saying in the meeting when he's talking about who the snitch is. Like the team is at the time they were two and 12, the worst team in the league. And you worrying about who the snitch is like, come on, like what you going to, bro, you need to worry about winning the game. Right. You know, right. So it, it just I don't know. I, I just feel like it's a bad look. It's a bad it, look. Yeah, and, and and I guess that that's that that's kind of my point. It's just like of all the things that you have to worry about, and there's a lot of things that he definitely need to be concerned with. Who said what to the media shouldn't be you know, that shouldn't be the, the, the thing that you are putting all your chips in on. Um and you know the as as you talked about and as we've 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 read and, and, and we've seen, his health is a major problem uh and this is a guy that came into the league you know with some serious health injuries i think like he had that that foot ankle issue that was the kind of injury just talking with people in the medical profession that type of injury has ended careers uh Mm -hmm. and this was and this was something that he was recovering from before his pro career even started so so what where is the concern level for the sixers from a health standpoint for joel going forward it was a major concern because you know, here, here's the deal. Like you look at Joel and 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 I, and I well, we talk about the concern, but you know, the Sixers preseason was derailed from the start. When Joel went in media day and said, "You know what? I'm gonna take my time. I'm ramping it up," and they all know it. Then training camp comes, and next thing you know, Joel and B's not practicing, and Nick Nurse is getting that attitude because everybody's asking, "Is Joel practicing?" So at that particular point, you know, that's a major concern because you look at it and say, well, bruh, you came back from surgery, played in the playoffs. You go to the Olympics and we give you some money and now you can't play. And now you look at it before they kept saying load management, right? Right. Load management. And now all of a sudden they coming out and saying it's swollen, swelling in the knee. So right. when you look at it, Gerard, you and you you you've been in this thing for a long time. If you had surgery months ago and you still have swelling in the knee, what it means is the surgery wasn't a good surgery. Right. Or secondly, you messed it up at a later date and it and it's not and it didn't reheal yet. So that's a major concern. And you look at the Sixers, Gerard, come on, bro, like the Eastern Conference. I mean, you've seen how this team is. Joel Embiid has always been the head of the snake. And if you if, and if he can't go, the way that this team is built, even though they always bring other people in there, now it's Paul George, right? Even though they bring other people in there, the way this team is constructed is all about Joel. And if Joel can't go, this team is in trouble. And that's that's the concern. Certainly, I know for them as an organization. And and, you know, when you look at just the way the Eastern Conference is is taking shape, this is the year where basically spots three through whatever are wide open, because even as as, even as they've struggled, there's not basically one really good week of basketball week and a half. And you back top four, top five in the East is I mean, is, is there some sense of we still have time to right the ship among the players, among the organization right now, even though they've gotten up to obviously a really pretty horrific start. Yeah, they do feel like there's a chance to right the, the ship, so to speak. But at the same time, 
I think they're they're a little bit realistic though, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at this roster and you compare this roster to the Boston Celtics, you compare it to the New York Knicks, you compare it to the Cleveland Cavaliers, a team that no one expected to be this good, right? They're just not as deep. And when you look at those teams, like, you know, you have the the Boston Celtics who have a lot of guys right now in their prime. You have the New York Knicks who have a little bit of a younger roster. The same thing with Cleveland. When you look at the Sixers, yeah, they can get back and they can be in playoff contention. But when it comes down to, like, going deep and far in the playoffs, you know, whereas the the Celtics are bringing in – younger players, the Sixers got to bring in Kyle Lowry, Reggie Jackson, and Eric Gordon. And it's nothing against those guys, right? They're, they had great careers, but we look at it and we just see how much older they are. And this is like a young man's game. So right. while they can say, yeah, we can go to the playoffs, I don't see them going far in the playoffs. So to me, yeah, you can write it, but at the same time, it's like, what are you doing? Just trying to get a first round playoff appearance. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because even still, I don't see them. If they match up with the wrong team, they could lose in the first round, in my opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just for our listeners, uh, this episode of the Big Three NBA podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media Network. Sign up now at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS and win up to 100 times your cash. And for the mathematically challenge, that means you can turn $10 into $1,000 in a single game watching your favorite sports team. Uh, and a special shout out to Game Time app, which takes the guesswork out of buying last minute tickets to your favorite sporting events. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Now, Keith, I wanted to keep it moving a little bit and, and, and you know, kind of pivot from a guy who ain't really doing a whole lot to a guy who kind of is balling a little bit. And I'm talking about Tyrese Maxey when he's been healthy, he's been really, really good, but he's also, and again, it sounds like he's also becoming growing increasingly frustrated with what's happening in Philly. How is, how do you think he is, you know, just kind of dealing with a lot of things that clearly he didn't sign up for when he, you know, as he kind of asserted himself as one of the better players on this, on this franchise. Yeah, you know, it's it's weird because, you know, Tyrese is a nice guy, right? And and he I think, you know, the losing everything, when you when you come in there and you you're a guy, you you're making more money now, you want to go out there, you want to assert yourself, you want to do this, you want to do everything you can for the team to win. And and I feel like when the team starts struggling, you know, sometimes you put a little bit more pressure on yourself, right? I think that's what he was doing offensively, and they're not working out. But then also he also right now, it's not just that I don't think he's totally 100 percent frustrated. It's just that he realizes that he has to be the leader of this team. That's what Kyle Lowry. That's what Nick Nurse. That's what they all want. So it, he has to take it upon himself at times to get out of his comfort zone and then step up and say stuff. Right. But I think that, you know, a prime example, like there was a time before Paul George and MB came back. That, and then we talk about frustration where he was out there playing and this brother was taking 30, 28, 29 shots a game. And right. they were losing. I mean, he was and he was tired playing 42 minutes, you know, stuff like that. And it gets to a point where, you know, you look at it like I just got a max deal. I'm an all star and I got a win for this team. Everybody's right. dependent on me. And, and that's how he got injured, man. He was playing too many minutes. That's how he strained his uh, right hamstring. Yeah. So, you know, I, I feel like, yeah, it's frustration, but it's frustration and, like, I'm trying to do whatever we can to keep us afloat because at the end of the day, he wants to be there with the Celtics and the Cavs, you know yeah. what I mean, and the Knicks. But so that's where the frustration lies. And, and like, you know, but he does, you know, I, I give him respect. He has been more of a leader this year than in seasons past. Now, how has it been since that report came out about him basically – he basically called Joel out. How has the relationship been with Joel? I mean, is there a noticeable difference that you can see in that locker room or even on the floor? It's hard to see on the floor because 
Joel don't really play. Uh, <laughs> but in the locker room, is, is there any any change that you see or sense between those two? No, I, 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 I haven't. Like when he was on that road trip, I didn't go on that one particular road trip. But after that, though, you have you saw him talking, you see him chatting and everything. And the thing about Tyrese, like of of uh I would have to say of just about of all the all-star caliber teammates that Joel has had, Tyrese is by far the closest one to him, right? So I think, oh yeah, he's the closest. Really? It ain't even close. Oh yeah, he's the closest. Because see, you gotta understand something. When 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 Joel and Ben Simmons came, it was kind of like both of them was trying to be the man. Right. Like right. they were trying to be the man. To me, when James came, James was like low key trying to be the man until he got hurt. You know what I mean? It was right. like one of those. Well, Maxi is kind of like, yo, I just want a ball, man. Like right. I'm here. I just want a ball. And then Joel was the one who told him, like, nah, bro, you gotta start looking for your own shot, man. Like mm-hmm. you kicking the ball up, you like you got to go in there and get it. Don't worry about me. Get yours. I'm gonna get mine. You right. get yours. And it that's how, to be honest with you, that's how Max became an all star last year with that two man game. So they have a pretty good relationship. But but also, I feel like that's the reason why that Maxi was the one who had that conversation with him. Because right. believe me, he wasn't the only one that felt that way, right? And you know you. You you know you covered the Celtics you you covered um, the Pistons you know what veter a veteran locker room is like right. you know the things the do's and the don'ts and right. I feel like you got all these guys like Kyle Lowry was here at the end of last year you got Paul George you got Eric Gordon you know you got Reggie Jackson and all these dudes are looking around like bro this ain't how we do things at other teams right so mm-hmm. what happens is it's like all right mm-hmm. young buck. You supposed to be the leader, this and that. Go talk to your man. You yeah. know what I mean? So again, I don't have any proof that's how that went down, but it makes the most sense because of their relationship. And he's been here the longest. So yeah, yeah it hasn't been a problem. Yeah, and that that actually that that makes sense because for for Joel to I think take that and not be completely you know, pissed off and, 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 you know, wanting to fight somebody, it has to come with somebody that he respects. And you're right. The role that he played in, and, 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 you know, in, in Maxie's evolution into a really good player, he's got a different kind of respect for him. And knowing that Maxie ain't coming at him because he thinks he's a bum or he thinks he's trash or anything like that. Maxie's coming at him like that because Maxie wants him to be better. Uh, and, and I, I think Joel probably takes it better in that regard, but at the, at, I go back to something that you said earlier, Keith, and and I think this is really where it's going to be very difficult for Joel to, to kind of work his way out of this. He physically can't bounce back the way he's used to. He because to your point, he's been. It's not like this is the first time he's been like criticized, but he's always had the benefit of talk smack about me now, and I'm gonna go out there and get you 40, 15, and six because uh, I'm I am him. He can't do that now. Exactly. And you remember, what was it, two years ago, two seasons ago, when he got MVP and he came back in the Boston Celtics series, right? Mm-hmm. You know, his knee was his knee was messed up. Right. But the thing that people didn't know, it was like what he, he would do is he would go to TD Garden Arena at night and he would just do up, downs, up, downs, mm-hmm. up, downs, up, downs. Now, when your knee is, is, is swollen like this and it keeps getting swelling in the knee, you can't do all that stuff. So it's kind of like in the past, we always looked at Joel and you would say, dang, man, the second game, he always looked way better. But Joel wasn't telling us he was putting it in. He was getting his cardio in. And now I feel like he can't do those things anymore because if not, you're going to mess the knee up and you don't want to put a wear and tear. And you're right. There's not a lot of bounce back. And you know, you, you know, you'll get to see him on on Christmas, and hopefully for the Sixers, he'll get some stuff back by then. But dude, I'm I'm here to tell you, like the lateral movement isn't there. He just always seems like he's a step too slow. Now, when they went up against Memphis, he did have 35 points, but at the same time, he had a six eight guy guarding him. Right? right, he was a backup power forward. So, you know, my question is, what can he do against other seven footers? 
But yeah, he just he just doesn't have the luxury of bouncing back the way he used to. And this could be something that they may decide to just sit him down for a little bit. Yeah, definitely some big, big, big time decisions the Sixers are going to have to make as far as how to utilize Joel Embiid going forward and, and just really figure out what's what's the direction of this organization, which, you know, th- this is part of the this is a type of process that they did not plan on. But they definitely are in the middle of some kind of process, whether it's to, you know, figure out whether to, to go all in on Cooper Flag at some point or whether they still got enough time to make a run towards uh, positioning themselves for the playoffs because there's a lot of games left to play for sure. Uh, Can before I add we... one thing right quick just to uh-huh. address this? So you remember the process. Yeah. You remember the process. We all do. We, we all do. do. Now, the process was like four years, a four-year mm-hmm. tank period. Their record right now through, what is it, 15 games mm-hmm. is the third – is would be the third worst record during the process. Wow. Yeah, they they were tanking and they had more wins than them. Damn. 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 Wow. Tough times in Philly. Tough times <laughs> in Philly for sure. But uh, before we before we go any further, I wanted to again give another shout out to uh, our, our sponsors, uh, Prize Picks, uh, the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports super easy and accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. Uh, again, you can win uh, up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four quick picks. Picks. Sign up today and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollar bonus. It is guaranteed. Uh, it's the best way to win real money this basketball season. Uh, you look at which players are going off, which ones aren't. Make your picks in less than sixty seconds and turn your sports opinions and and and, and feelings into real money all season long. I can tell you right now, as I'm looking at the schedule coming up, I'm looking at that Milwaukee-Utah game real close. Dame Lillard, uh, the, if he scores uh, 24 or 23 and a half points, that's what we're looking at, score more or less than that. I'm thinking he's going to score less than that because Dame Lillard has been scoring less than that consistently of late. Uh, I think five of his last six games, he's had 24 or less points. So I'm going to go less with that. And Colin Sexton, a point guard for the Utah Jazz, uh, looks like a one and a half three pointers is uh, more or less of, of that shot. Will he make? I'm going to say he's going to make more than that. And the reason why? Because he has been making more than that lately. Last four or five games, he's made at least two three pointers. Uh, and so I'm going to go with the more on that. And if you want in on this action, here's what you do. You download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. That's download the app. Use the code CLNS and get $50 instantly. Prize picks run your game. Now, Keith, I wanted to get back and talk about the third member of the big three that we haven't seen. He's the newest member, uh, a guy that we haven't really seen as much of as a lot of people thought, which is kind of surprising because missing games, ain't that kind of like PG-13's thing? Uh, He does miss a lot of games. What has been the reaction uh, among, you know, the the, the Sixers faithful to Paul George just being, you know, nowhere to be found for long stretches of this uh, still young season? Frustrated. The Sixers faithful is frustrated. I mean, it's funny because, you know, I've even had, I mean, you see people on, on social media. I received emails, stuff like that. People talk before. Now, they hated Tobias Harris, but now they miss Tobias Harris. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They do because they miss him because they're looking at the numbers right now, and they're extremely similar. Mm-hmm. And and then you look at it, and you see where Tobias showed up and played all the time, where Paul is hurt. And it's, it's a little bit of frustration because, you know, the Sixers, let's be real, like, yeah, um, he could have got traded to the Golden State Warriors, you know, right. on the sign and trade. But in regards to free agency, the Sixers were the only team that was willing to give him what he wanted, that four-year max. So they give it to him, and then, you know, the guy hyperextends his knee, and then he's out for three weeks. He's back for three weeks or two weeks, 
and then he hyper extended extended again. So you know, there's a little bit of frustration from the fan base, and and I think that a part of the frustration is because of the injuries. The second part is, you know, there was a time when when Maxi went out, and then Joel had yet to play, and they played against the Lakers, and then they had another game and team. And everybody thought they were saying it's going to be PG and the Miracles, like, right. you know, Danny and the Miracles, right? That's what they were thinking. And then yep. you're looking at it, and, yeah, he was getting assists. He was doing a lot of other things, but the scoring just wasn't there. He was struggling offensively. So you know this Philadelphia fan base, how they turn on people, and they were right. extremely frustrated with Paul George, and they're extremely frustrated with him right now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he's a heck of a player when he's healthy, but that's a big win uh, when he's healthy. Uh, very tough, very tough. Uh, the Celtics, they're not going to see them till Christmas Day, but you can still, you know, there's still tickets available even at this early date. And one of the best places to get great prices on tickets is the Game Time app. Uh, for those of you who want to catch your favorite pro teams, college teams, Game Tap is Game Time app is the place to be. Uh, my guy Keith here, as I mentioned earlier at the at this top of the program, is a University of Pittsburgh. Uh, grad and when his uh, crew was playing my boys from Syracuse I actually went on the game time app and thought about getting tickets the prices were great but I had a weird feeling Keith that that game was not going to be great uh, at least not for my crew and I was right I was right uh, but for those of you who you know have a little bit more faith in your crew uh, can handle their business game time app is a great way to get in to the games and get it at a great price uh, one of the really cool things I like about the game time app is the all in pricing so that when you get to the checkout line, the price that you thought you were paying, it will be the price that you'll actually pay as opposed to some other, uh, you know, uh, apps that kind of eh, the numbers get a little fuzzy at, in the end there. Uh, and before you even get to the checkout, you, they've got great panoramic views of all the seats. So you can not only get a great price, but you can get a great seat and know what that seat looks like before you actually have to buy the ticket for it. So again, and, when I, I was looking at the the, uh, the game with uh, Ashley Pittsburgh is going to be in Boston playing BC in a couple of weeks and you can get in there for as little as four dollars and you can get a super deal, which is a basically a, a cheaper version of a really great seat for great price. It's like you can see upper sideline at that BC game for as little as five dollars. Uh, and that game will be November 30th at BC. Uh, and again, the, the tickets across the board are, are super affordable when you go through the game time app. And so look, all you got to do is download the game time app, create an account and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase terms apply. That's download the app, create an account, use the code CLNS and get $20 off terms apply. What time is it? Game time. And before we continue, uh, we've, we've, you know, I want to talk about, We've talked a lot about the players so far and the roles that they play and where the Sixers are. But let's let's be honest. They don't assign playing time. They don't sign players to the roster. So we're going to talk about Nick Nurse and um, and Daryl Morey. And just, Keith, what, both of those guys, it seems from afar, are in this position where things aren't obviously working the way they thought. Are either one of them in a little bit hotter seat than the other at this point? I mean, I would say Daryl Morey has to be in like, I mean, dude, he in in flag like his stuff. I mean, I would say, yo, if that seat, the seat look, man, the dag on, it's just the plastic and all the rubber, everything is <laughs> melted up. It's like a little ball right about now. You know what I mean? Forget hot. <laughs> that seat burn. It's ashes right about now. Right? I mean, so so here's the thing. The reason why I'm saying that is because. You know, and, and Nick Nurse, and I'm going to get to Nick Nurse too, but the reason why I'm saying that is because you look at it, there's only certain teams like, you know, you got the Boston Celtics, they're trying to bring everybody back. They're trying to figure things out. They know they got to pay the superstars, right? Right. Well, the Sixers, what they did is you can make an argument that the roster they had last year, it ain't an argument, the roster they had last year was better than the roster they have this year, right? Yeah. Go like that. So especially towards the end, right? So so what happened is he goes out there and everybody's scared of his second apron. 
So he goes out there and maxes up three, maxes out three players. And then when you do that, you hope and pray that you can get some quality guys at the minimum. You can get some, you know, you can get some other guys at the 8 million thing, but the quality guys at the minimum. Now, only how that thing is going to work out is those three dudes that you maxed out are healthy and playing at an elite level. And when Embiid went out, when PG went out, then all of a sudden, you know, no offense to Eric Gordon, who I like, but he, at this stage of his career, he's a a, a catch and shoot type of guy. But when you telling him, bro, we're going to need you to create against these young boys, you're putting them in a bad spot. When you say (laughs) Kyle Lowry, yo, I need you to play a bunch of minutes. Now you're wondering why his hip is messed up, right? Right. So in other words, Daryl Morey, this is his roster. He created this stuff. And, yeah. and you realize they have holes. Now, so Nick Nurse is kind of sort of like the old Bill Parsons thing, Bill Parcells thing. Mm. If you want me to cook the meal, then let me go buy the groceries, right? Right. So I can understand that. <laughs> However, Yabu, Yabu Sully, who yeah. used to for the, play for the play for the Celtics. Yeah. I'm telling you, everybody's talking about this guy, Jared McCain, who has been the phenomenal, the rookie. Right. But before he ex- he took off, um, Yabu was the guy. He was he was killing it. And to mm-hmm. me, the one thing that Nick Nurse made a mistake on doing was this is your best guy off the bench. Y'all play the Miami Heat, and this dude doesn't come in until two minutes and forty five seconds left in the third quarter. Wow. Like you gotta play him. But I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to get these different lineups and stuff like that. But at the same time. You have to play the guy. But I think it's more so on on uh, Daryl Morey, but we all know it's easier to fire the coach yeah. if something goes wrong. So I think if someone's going to have to leave, it's probably going to be Nurse. But he didn't put this roster together. He Facts. didn't. Facts. You, you just touched on uh, Yabuselli. How, I, why is it, Why do you think he's been able to fit in so well in Philly? Because, I mean, obviously in Boston, things didn't work out how he or the Celtics thought. And, you know, even after he left, he still seemed like a guy that was hadn't quite figured out or found his niche. Why does it seem like Philly has been such a good spot for him, when, at least when he gets a chance to play? I think it's a different time. I also think that if the fact that he it didn't work out for the Celtics helped him out a lot. I do. I think that, you know, you come into the league, you go into the NBA, you see what it's like, you see all that, right? And then all of a sudden you go, you know, after two years, he's playing in China. Then he's back over in Europe and this and that. And you see the difference. And I feel like, you know, I remember when I used to see him over there when he played for the Celtics, he was just a brother, big dude, smiling all the time, (laughs) nodding his head. Am I right, though? Am yeah, right? facts. It was so, a fact. So, so now I look at him, and it's kind of like, yo, I'm on a minimum deal. I'm trying to break back in. I got to attack this. And I yeah. think it's more of a sense of urgency. And I think the fact that he had it and he lost it and the Celtics had success after him, I feel like that, that that's part of the reason why he is. Like, you know what I mean? I think he worked on his game, too, because he's doing some things that, I didn't see him doing in Boston. Yeah, yeah, and just just want to bring this whole conversation full circle. You know, we we said at the, at the very top that you know Philly, the the way that they kind of came into this season, there was a thought that they would be among those teams challenging uh, the Celtic for supremacy in the East. Obviously, it hasn't worked out that way so far. But where are the Celtics on the radar now? I mean, are the six are they just so far back that they can't even think about contending with the top teams in the East that? Uh, or is that something that's still, you know, as part of the plan, part of the goal and purpose this year? I mean, that's part of the goal and purpose. But 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 I think right now it's like they got to chip away, man. Like right now, dude, like no offense. They're behind the Detroit Pistons right now. Like, I mean, if <laughs> you want to be real, I mean, they behind the Detroit Pistons and the Charlotte, the Charlotte Hornets and, and stuff like that. So yeah. you got to do baby steps now. Again, like. You know, I think the big thing for the Sixers, and, and then also I, I think, you know, if we're going to be realistic, the Sixers have only played six minutes and nine seconds with their big three. Wow. So they got to get all these guys on the floor together and see how that's going to work out for them and then take it from there. But, 
yeah, like I, I like they're not they can't focus on the Celtics. They can't focus on uh the, you know the uh the, the New York Knicks, anybody like that right now. And they gotta worry about dude, they ain't even they gotta worry about what we're gonna do the next time we see the Indiana Pacers. Right. Right. And which is crazy because, I mean, when you have again, when you have dynamic players like Paul George, like a Joel Embiid, Maxi, you figure that, you know, once they get on to get get out there, they'll just figure it out. But to your point, Keith, six minutes and nine seconds. Damn. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Paul, it was like so Maxi played Maxi played like, you know, five minutes in the first half, five minutes and some change in the first half. And then they were all on the floor together for 41 seconds in the third half. This was against this was against the Memphis Grizzlies, and that's when PG kind of like bumped his knee mm-hmm. with with Desmond Bain, and then trying to grab a, you know grab the rebound. And then after that, it was it. That was it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, and that is it for this episode of the Big Three NBA Podcast. I want to thank our guest, Keith Pompey of the Philadelphia Choir, for giving us some time. Much appreciated, Keith. I uh, want to give one more shout out to Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media Network. And also a shout out to our good friends at Game Time, which takes the guesswork out of buying last minute tickets to your favorite sporting events. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Game time app, download it, create an account, use the code CLNS for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Uh, and a- again, Keith, uh, once again, man, thank you for your time. Much appreciated. Hope, looking forward to seeing you on Christmas Day here in Boston. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a good game out of it. Well, let's put it this way: you gonna win, I'm gonna win. Philly, Boston, I don't know. I don't well, know. You know who's going to win that game, bro. Like the way it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I mean, come on. Yo, we, we was joking a couple of days ago and somebody said, man, if they don't get that stuff right, it's going to be the Christmas Day Massacre. Oh, <laughs> They're going to play the game at 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't right. You ain't right. Oh, damn. Damn. Once again, man, keep Pompey and Philadelphia Park. Keep much appreciated, brother. All right. Peace. I'll see you.